invite you to please stand as you are able. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. God of abundant life, we come to you in these waning days of the semester, still in the throes of a pandemic that has spanned more than a year. And we are perhaps tired. May the sun's warmth, the playful mix of clouds and vibrant blue painting the sky, the bounty of colors exploding from fertile ground, proclaim your promise of newness and remind us that your eternal dream for us is life in abundance. We weary travelers offer thanks and praise for these reminders of resurrection and offer this grateful prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our psalm of you this morning is Psalm 48, found on the sheets. Best I can tell, we go all the way down the first column and then we switch over. <laughs> the Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God, whose holy mountain rises in beauty, the joy of all the earth. For the kings assembled together, together they advanced. They saw at once, they were astounded, dismayed, they fled in fear. A trembling seized them there, like the pains of earth, by the east wind you have destroyed the ships of as we have heard, so we have seen, in the city of our God, in the city of the Lord of hosts, which God upholds forever. God, we ponder your love within your temple. Your praise, O oh God, let your name reaches the ends of the earth. With justice your right hand is filled. Mount Zion rejoices. The people of Judah rejoice at the sight of your judgments. We'll walk through Zion, walk all around it, count the number of its towers, review all its reports, examine its castles, that you may tell the next generation that such is our God. Our God forever and ever will always lead us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of John. Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you knew, know, if you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it.
In just a moment, I will offer a few questions for our individual reflection. As you would re well realize, the morning prayer leader often frames these questions with just a bit of context. In this harried time at the end of the academic year, I made a move I might not typically, and I searched for cliff notes. And so with gratitude, I acknowledge that I will share here from the wisdom of Reverend Michael K. Marsh, an Episcopal priest from West Texas, whose blog is called Interrupting the Silence. Reflecting on the passage we have just heard, Reverend Marsh writes, this is the story of humanity's deepest longing and the one in and by whom that longing is satisfied. Our longing is manifested by our restlessness, by our sense of emptiness, by our search for meaning and significance. Philip's words echo, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Philip expresses the universal desire of humanity to stand in the presence of holiness, to behold God, and to be satisfied. Philip reminds us, however, that true satisfaction is not found in our accomplishments, acquisitions, or what we do for ourselves. Satisfaction is not about filling a void, it is about stepping into new life, God's life. And so let us take some time in reflection this morning to consider these two questions. How have you experienced restlessness, emptiness, or the search for meaning this past year? And how are you being invited to step into new life. As we turn to the Lord in prayer, I invite you to stand. For our students, during this last week of classes with finals week on the horizon, that they may be well in mind, body, and spirit as they navigate this stressful time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faculty and staff, who have worked tirelessly throughout COVID 
to create an environment in which our students can learn and grow, that the coming summer months offer space to rest their bodies and refresh their spirits. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the class of 2021, that they may experience a joy-filled commencement weekend, and that the next steps in their journeys may bring goodness and life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else do we pray this day? Gathering together the prayers we have spoken aloud and those we carry attentively in our hearts. We join together and turn to the Lord in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just a reminder, as I think most of you know, that this is the final um, morning prayer for the year. Uh, and so again, we wish everybody all the best this week and throughout finals. Let us close our, our time together in prayer. Good and loving God, we offer you all we do this day. We follow your example of following each one together while living in communion. In our teaching and in our learning, may we seek your wisdom and guide our words and our actions. In our work and in our play, may we hear your call to live in hope and serve in generosity. In our prayers and in our contemplation, may we recall your command to honor the Sabbath even as we move through the great day. Loving God, this day is our offering. May we live it as a reflection of your love. Amen.